welcome back to the Chat Chan. In today's video, my chef Alejandro will be making some Chilean sea bass, I believe. Alejandro! Where the f is my Chilean sea bass? Welcome to the Laura Legends Kitchen, where in today's video, I am actually going to be taking over for Chef Alejandro because he has been involved in, in an unfortunate schmelting accident. Yes, yes, he has. Okay, that was really bad gold member impression, but let's let's go with that. So it is my sea bass! Yes, Mr. Hammond, I'll get on that, sir. So in today's video, we are going to be recreating that famous dish from the lunch scene from 1993's Jurassic Park, where Dr. Grant, Dr. Sadler, Dr. Malcolm sat down and talked coupon days, condors, and poisonous plants with park founder John Hammond, as well as his lawyer, Donald Gennaro. What, we'll have a, a coupon day or something. At the table, they are presented with this eye-catching dish of Chilean sea bass atop these very iconic, fancy, schmancy Jurassic Park charger plates. I thought that John Hammond was saying chili and sea bass. I only just kind of realized that he was saying Chilean or Chilean sea bass. After this scene hit the big screen, this seemingly unpopular fish was said to have been thrust into the culinary spotlight, and many suspect that Jurassic Park was one of the main contributors to the fish's overfishing all those years ago, which nearly drove the species into extinction. Chilean sea bass is actually called the Patagonian toothfish. It's found in cold water of about one to four degrees Celsius in the Southern Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Ocean. The average weight of a commercially caught Patagonian toothfish is about 15 to 22 pounds, and large adults can exceed 222 pounds and live up to 50 years. This fish used to be considered a trash fish. It was very oily, and fishermen actually threw it back into the water. Then this guy called Lee Lance, who was a fish wholesaler, saw this fish being wasted and thrown back into the ocean, and he wanted to bring it to the American market to capitalize on this ratty fish. So he gave it a makeover with a new name, Chilean sea bass. After being featured as a high-class meal in Jurassic Park, the relatively unknown fish became one of the most in-demand and high-delicacy fish served in upscale restaurants all over the country in the 90s. Because of this demand, Chilean sea bass stocks were being depleted, and it was up to environmental groups alongside chefs to take on the campaign, Take a Pass on Chilean Sea Bass, which encouraged chefs to take the fish off their menus until populations were back to sustainable levels. Unfortunately, even now, the Chilean sea bass is still overfished in certain regions. You can, of course, buy it from costly, sustainable sources, but because of that, you're going to be paying a lot. Living here on the West Coast in British Columbia, Canada, this was so hard to track down. I was able to track down one place that offered this Chilean sea bass, and that was Inlet Seafoods in Port Moody. You guys in the US apparently have Chilean sea bass fillets in Costco, like these Kirkland packs, and you guys can actually find this in your grocery store. So if there's anyone around Vancouver or living in BC here in Canada, I will leave a link down below to Inlet Seafoods if you want to, you know, recreate this dish yourselves, just finally give this Chilean sea bass to try to see what all the hullabaloo is about. But be warned, it is very, very expensive. It just looks big because it's on the ice. Um, but these five fillets all together was $88 Canadian. So dare I say I spared no expense. Oh no, is that phrase copyrighted? Right, let me try that again. Dare I say I did not hold back the funds to purchase this item? And that's gonna catch on nicely. So to go with our meal today, I have this amazing Jurassic Park dinnerware set that we're gonna use to actually plate our fancy pantsy lunch today. You can find this officially licensed set inspired by the plates used in the movie on twink.com. This 16 piece set comes with place settings for four people, including four dinner plates, salad salad plates, soup bowls, and mugs. Each piece features the classic Jurassic Park logo with gold trim around the edges of each dish. And there's even a little surprise at the bottom of the soup bowls. There's a little T-Rex gold footprint. These are not microwavable or dishwasher safe, so you're gonna wanna hand wash these babies only. You know, it's, it's far cry from the Tiffany & Co replica plates that range anywhere from, you know, $300 to $600 just for a single plate. And heck yes, I'm totally 
grabbing one of these plates to put in my Jurassic Park collection and I'll get a little stand for it so it can kind of sit upright and be displayed nicely. So if any of you are interested in this super cool and unique set, I will definitely leave a link to this down below in my video description. I'm more of like a skip the dishes, take out Chinese food kind of girl. I don't really do that much cooking at all. If I have to, obviously I will cook, but I just so let's do this, okay? Get pumped up, get pumped up to do this. Okay, so because I have no idea what the heck I'm doing, I'm gonna follow this Binging with Babish YouTube video. Huh, I guess it would've been nice to have more than 15% on my iPad. Laura, I don't have the gift of foresight. I'm not Elrond. I, there's no way I could have saw this coming. And I already have all the ingredients. Um, so let's just follow this as best as we can. Try not to set the house on fire and let's try not to get sad and call our mom because mom, Mom should be here cooking this for us. I'm so scared. Why can't you be here to cook it for me? Mom, I have to do this scary oil thing where I like fill the pan with oil and I have to like deep fry stuff. And just be very careful not to overheat the oil. Yeah. Okay, step one, peel the sweet potato. Do I have to wash the sweet potato? I uh, probably not. Oh my God. I just dropped my potato in the garbage. I'm sure it's okay. Now I had to actually buy this because I don't have a handheld spiralizer at home. How the heck does this work? Oh. Oh, okay. Wow, was I way off. Oh, there's a hair in there. Oh, cool, look at that. We're making food. This is such a handy little gadget. It's a must have. Okay, this was in Dante's mouth and it fell on the floor, but okay, we spiralized it. Now what do you want me to do? So he said to put some vegetable oil in a pan, but I feel like I want to use a pot because I feel like it's a little safer maybe. I don't know. So I'm just gonna, just gonna fill this up with however much I think I need. Oh, there's a hair in my fries, in my curly fries. Oh, there's another one in there too. <laughs> maybe I should have put my hair up. I guess that's enough oil. I don't know. So let's heat that up. Okay, three tablespoons of cornstarch. Whoa, that is a MSA. So cornstarch, and it wants me to make like a slurry with water. If you're like nice and gentle, it will flow. But then when you hit it, it's like super hard. I remember doing those as a kid. Okay, so we actually want a slurry. We wanna make a slurry, not a hard, crazy liquid. Okay, now it's not a slurry. Now it's just like water. Okay, whatever, I don't even care anymore. Having a hard time finding this delicate balance of Cornstarch and water to make a slurry, not that crazy liquid. Pretty sure I've used up like half of my cornstarch making this tiny little mix that I think was way harder than I made it out to be. So I'm gonna put my spirals in here. Oh, today's so fancy. Today's a fancy day. Today's a fancy day to be Laura. Okay, got that nice and all coated. I'm really worried about that oil on the stove because I have no clue what temperature it is. And I know that if it's like super hot, it's gonna just all splash back. Let's put one strand in here and let's see what happens. Just throw it in there. Oh my God. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's way too hot. It needs to be at 350, I think they said, 350. Oh, 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 getting a little too hot. Oh, sure. I guess HH stands for hot, hot. <laughs> it's like, I guess above what the temperature uh, range is. 360, 70, 90, hot, hot, too hot, hot. Still too hot, hot. I feel like it's still too hot. 90. Too hot, too hot, hot. Day five and it still says hot, hot. And then I'm just gonna put a little bit in and hope for the best. Whoa. 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 I'm not aggressive. I'm just winging it at this point. Okay, we have our curly, burly little sweet potato nest here that I'm supposed to separate, but I'm not gonna separate it because, because yeah. Oh shoot, I was supposed to season them with salt. Add a little salt on that. Be very lucky to find this stuff for less than $30 a pound. So <laughs> yeah, it was expensive. I'm not gonna shock green beans in an ice bath after cooking them. I'm just gonna cook some green beans and hope for the best. I've actually never cooked beans before, so <laughs> am I supposed to like just cook them in water? Weird, winky, misshapen. Um, tomatoes? Okay, so I need six weird looking tomatoes. Okay, tomato step done. That was easy. Don't taste, stop, 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 that's mine. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> Do you think I can catch this giant one in my mouth? Okay, let me see. Oh my God, get it! If 
finely chop one tablespoon of fresh rosemary and one small shallot. I've never chopped a shallot in my life, so let's see if we can chop the shallot. Um, why is there water boiling? Oh, the roomie, shoot, oh my God, I totally forgot. That should have been cooking like 10 minutes ago. Oh, wow, way to open up that bag, Laura. What's parboil? What's parboil green beans? What does parboil mean? Parboil is used as a verb to mean partly cook food by boiling, as in parboil the vegetables in salted water for about five minutes. My eyes are all watery. Eh. Okay, 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 wait, wait, wait. Uh, okay, 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 here's my beans. I just put it in some water, in some cold water. I got a package. I had to answer the door. One second. What did I get? What did I get? That is so awesome. Okay, Metlar. Okay, you can stand. Where can you stand, Metlar? You can stand right here. Oh, you really suck at standing. Metlar has joined the chat. All right, I have to do one tablespoon of rosemary. Oh, look at me. Time to cook the sea bass. Okay, got our sea bass cooking. Non-stick my butt. Look at all that. Look at all that stuck to the pan. Split. 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 Whoa. Ah, no, I lost it. Oh, no, I lost it. Oh, no. No. To get an internal temperature of 135 degrees. Let's not forget about you. And in here, I'm going to put our shallots. I cook this for a mini wheat. So I need a half a cup of dry white wine. But uh, he said to kind of double the recipe. Oh, God. Squat. Ah! Everything's always too hot. But in the video, he said to double his recipe, so I'm gonna do a whole cup. And then I'm doing two half cups of uh, chicken broth. So one, two, add all my rosemary. Hey, not sure how much parsley to add, but let's do a little bam. And you know what, let's just do two, because I love lemon, so let's just do two tablespoons. Okay, time to add some butter. I don't know how much to put in, so I'm just gonna do a tablespoon, see how that works out. If I can get it out of there. And here's two. So I think I'm supposed to let this cook till it's like syrupy or something. Whoa, 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 it's supposed to be 135? Okay, okay, we're done, we're done, we're done, we're done. Okay, okay, it's all up to you now, Sauce. How long you're gonna take to be syrupy? Look at Donto, what a good boy. Thank you for being my sous chef today. Okay, so there is what we're going for. It's not as yellow as, as I was hoping it would be. Kind of burned it a little bit. Uh, I think that's what we're going for. Because you like entire fillets instead of pieces, but I'm just scared that they're gonna fall apart. <laughs> Looking kind of ratty, but I think that's okay. You cannot imagine making this like for a restaurant. <laughs> okay, then we have tomatoes on the on those sides here. So we have like tomato, tomato. I think like that's good. We're gonna put our giant nest that I did not untangle, so we're just gonna go like that. I can't believe I made it. Look at this. Laura who? Laura MasterChef, Laura Legends? Uh, yes, please. This turned out really, really well. Let's test some of that fish out. Mmm, that is such a rich, fatty fish. And this fish is known for being incredibly fatty and oily, so wow. You can definitely taste that. Let's taste that sauce that we had underneath. Let's see how that turned out. And I'll also get a little bit of that uh, sweet potato. That's actually pretty good. Good job, Laura. That turned out okay. That turned out okay. If there's anyone hiring right now, if you're looking for a chef, you know, just based on my resume, this is my, I can do fancy stuff. Okay, I'm skilled in Chilean sea bass and spiraled sweet potato. Let's do a few green beans on the salad plate. Let's do some wine. Let's do some white wine inside that cup. And in our bowl, let's grab some green jello because Jurassic Park. How Jurassic Park is that? Could you imagine having like some friends or family over and you make this for them on these plates? And you got like, you got like Chilean sea bass, you got jello for dessert, you have like a little salad plate here for some starter dish. And you of course have your, oh, I just got that dirty with my lipstick. Uh, and then obviously you have your little mugs here, your cups. How cool is that? Don't taste that cool. Is that cool? 
So I hope you all enjoyed this video, you know, as complicated and difficult it looked, you know, on my end to make, it really wasn't that difficult. Um, but it was really fun to do. And as a Jurassic Park fan, how cool is it to say that, you know, you tried this Chilean sea bass dish, let alone made, you know, an exact kind of replica, you know, in the movie and to also have it on these plates, bonus, bonus. So very, very cool. So in the comments down below, I'd love to know some of your favorite movie and TV show foods out there. You know, these kind of specialized foods that are their own little niche inside of these movies and TV shows like Jurassic Park's got, you know, the Chilean sea bass, SpongeBob's got Krabby Patties. There's lots and lots of foods out there. There's lots of anime shows. So leave me some of your favorite dishes and let me know if you've tried to make them in the comments down below. So please remember to like, comment and subscribe I come out with new videos every week. <laughs> I don't like mine. Come check me out on social media and help support the channel on Patreon. So thank you all so much for watching and stay legendary. <laughs>